independence means it is not like previous time uh, now it is there it is there now it is there c k d y there is a registration key okay c e k d y now i am going to the uh, recording mode Okay. Sir, what's the keyword? It's case my name. It is C E K. C for cat, E for elephant, K for Karnataka. C E K D five. D for donkey. E Y for yellow. Uh, I am going to today's lecture. So, what we have studied in the previous class was the fundamentals of uh, electromagnetic force generation. Then we had derived the expression for torque constant and vacuum of constant of the motor from the fundamentals. Then uh, we had derived the transfer function block diagram as well as transfer function of the armature controlled DC torque motor, assuming that. There is no external load, and finally we have arrived at this transfer function. That is theta m divided by E A S, where theta m is the shaft deflection of the motor, and E A is the applied control voltage across the armature. So the control to the armature is the voltage applied across the armature. That is why it's called armature controlled motor. And finally we got such an expression K T by R divided. S into JMS plus BM plus KT KB by RA, and we have seen that there is additional term KT KB by RA is due to the electromagnetic induction, and that adds to the uh, passive mechanical damping. That is the viscous damping at the bearing of the motor. Finally, uh, the numerator is KT by RA. Uh, today. Uh, I am going into a little bit of the force generation part. The previous um, block diagram can be split into these two part. And the only difference is I have removed LA because I have assumed that inductance effect is negligible. Uh, otherwise, it is same only. You can see there are two parts. First part is this portion. This is purely uh, attributed to the motor, torque motor, the electromagnetic force generation part. That's why I indicated it as torque generator. We are applying armature voltage, vacuum F is coming, the difference is applied across the motor coil to produce the current, current multiplied by KT gives the torque TM. And the torque TM is affected by the uh, motor velocity. So this completes the uh, motor part generation, and this is purely the load dynamics part. Given Tm, how omega m and theta m are generated. It is called the forward dynamics of the load, because the cause is torque and the effect is theta m or omega m. Okay. Uh, if you consider the motor part, this is uh, purely static part. There is no yes -ter. The Laplace operator is not here. That means purely static relationship. Uh, there are three quantities. The generated quantity is Tm, and Tm depends on inputs. One is Ea, the applied voltage across armature is the uh, motor shaft velocity. So you can equate like this Tm is equal to Ea minus Kb omega m into Kt by Ra, putting into two. Part that is equating uh, uh, 
Taking Tm to the two independent variables. One is Ea, another is omega n, Kt by R a into Ea minus Kt Kb by R a into omega. This is in the form of a straight line equation. If you take omega m and Tm as variables and Ea as a constant. Because assume that we are keeping a constant voltage across the armature Ea. Then it is of the form of y is equal to mx plus c, where the slope is given by minus kt kb by ra, and the offset is given by kt ra by e. That's why I have pl I'm plotting here. Here the x-axis is the motor speed omega omega variable, and so that is taken as the independent variable, and y-axis is the motor torque Tm. So if you take in the, uh, the slope minus kt kv by r, this, this is the curve. It is having a uh, uh, slope of minus kt kv by r. I noted here because of the time, uh, short of space. So you note down this slope of this curve is minus kt kv by r. And it is having a y offset, that is torque offset of kt into Vs by R because I am keeping Vs as a variable value E. Uh, sorry, I am not like that. E is the variable value. Vs is the maximum value of E. Vs represents the supply voltage to the power amplifier of the motor driver. So the uh, armature voltage can take a maximum value of plus Vs or minus Vs. Uh, maximum of plus Vs or minimum of minus Vs. So we can two curves, one corresponding to the plus Vs, that is Ea is equal to plus Vs, correspondingly the offset will be Kt into Vs by R. This is the straight line. Now, if you want to drive the motor in the opposite direction, the minimum voltage or maximum in the opposite is minus Vs, that corresponds to this line and any other value of Va in between plus Vs and minus Vs. If you are putting a mature as a constant voltage, you will get multiple curves like this. This is called speed torque characteristics of the motor, and it intersects the speed axis at a point called no load speed, which is given by Vs by Kb. Why it is no load speed means no uh, it no load means it cannot provide any torque output. That is when motor is rotating without any load. What will happen? Motor need not have to give any torque. Under such a condition, the speed will be maximum and the speed is given by this. That can be obtained by Tm, equate Tm to zero. So solve this equation and Ea is equal to plus Vs here putting. That Kt by Ra will get cancelled, you will get Vs by Kb. Vs by Kb is the no load speed. And um, if you assume that the viscous damping of the motor bearing is zero, while the motor is rotating at a constant speed, the inertia load will not demand any driving torque because inertia will oppose only acceleration, not constant speed. So that is a, a real case of no load running or Ideally speaking, if you are, you say your mag, uh, rotor is, motor rotor is uh, having some magnetic bearing or uh, some, uh, some other bearing which is not having any friction. And if you give a supply voltage of Vs across the armature, then the motor will accelerate and accelerate. Finally, it will settle at a speed. And that speed is called no load speed because there is no load, no speed. Similarly, if you put negative voltage, minus Vs, it will settle at this speed. Similarly, if you stall the mo motor, that is if you are holding the motor shaft stationary, then there is no omega m, and hence there is no back m of here. So what will happen is the torque generated will be maximum because there is no reduction from this side, and that value is kt ra into Vs. That is why I heard it as stall torque kt into vs by ra uh, this explains this uh, complete diagram 
and there are four quadrants for this. Uh, this motor will act as a motor when it generates mechanical power. That means the product of motor speed and motor shaft torque, if it is positive, then it will act like a motor. That will happen only in the first quadrant and third quadrant. In the other two quadrants, motor is uh, not generating mechanical power. Instead, it consumes mechanical power and generates electrical energy. That is in quadrant two and four, it will work like a generator. The same motor will work like a generator. That is, we are, uh, instead of giving uh, electrical input from here, we are giving mechanical input from this side. We are driving the motor through some external prime mover. That will generate omega m into kb. That eb will be generated. eb will be generated. And that is the generator principle of the same motor. So it can work in dual mode without any change. This is the uh, beauty of such a linear configuration. And the speed or characteristics actually gives the complete picture of both motor action as well as generator action. Anyway, I will come back to this again after uh, some more class because I have to draw the load locus also along with this. Now I have drawn only the motor characteristics, not the load part that I will plot on over this. And your lab also will contain a session to plot the speed or characteristics along with load locus. Okay. Sir. Ah. Can you explain again from the graph that how can we differentiate between the motor action and generator action? Yeah. For, the, from the graph. Ah, for, for, from the graph. Okay. Yes. From the, graph, the simple principle is, say, if, what, what do you mean by motor? You are giving an electrical input and you are getting a mechanical output. That is the mechanical power derived should be positive, right? What is mechanical power? Shaft torque multiplied by shaft speed. Here, this is shaft speed, this is shaft torque. So if you multiply in this first quadrant, both are positive and hence the product is positive. Here, in this third quadrant, both are negative. Speed is negative, torque is negative. So the product is positive. In one way, in the first quadrant, motor is de developing power in clockwise direction. And in the third quadrant, motor is de developing mechanical power in the counterclockwise direction. That's all. Both are motor action, and that is obtained by switching over the EA polarity from uh, positive to negative. That's all. But in the other case, you are not applying any external voltage. EA will be zero. There is nothing like that. We we are not no any external thing. But instead of that, we are driving mechanically. Then, if you again take the product here, the equations are the same. One will be positive. Here, torque is positive, but speed is negative. So the product is negative. Here, torque is negative, speed is positive. Product is negative. So in this both the quadrant, it will act like a generator, converting mechanical energy back into electrical thing. And EB will be the generated voltage output. OK? Yes, sir. Ah, now uh, we are we are going to uh, the load coupling. So far, we have been uh, uh, dealing with the model model of the motor without any external load. Only the internal impedance, JM, BM, are motor rotor inertia and the rotor uh, whatever viscous damping only considered. Now we are coupling an external load. The very purpose of using uh, uh, making an actuator is to drive an external load. But there are certain there are facts should be considered before directly coupling the load to the motor. There are applications where uh, load is directly coupled to the motor shaft. But in general, that will not be sufficient. Uh, that's what I am uh, bringing it here. Need of gear unit for position servo system. Uh, there are multiple servo applications are there. Speed servo is there. Position servo is there and torque servo is there, so many servos are there. Here, if your uh, final controlled variable is the position of a particular system, then it's called position servo system, and we are 
maintaining the position in a desired orientation irrespective of the external disturbance and also sometimes we have to change the orientation based on the external command also this is called position servo in uh, typical applications position servo applications such as antenna orientation control you may see the parabolic dish antenna oriented towards uh, geosynchronous uh, satellite for communication purpose that is the case then gimbal deflection control in rockets l1 radar control in aircrafts joint deflection control in robotic manipulators etc all require high torque to ensure high acceleration for the load and low speed drive system for actuation we will never rotate at higher rpm but there will be certain rate of change of speed will be called but actual speed requirement is less but normally an electric motor produces low torque high speed mechanical output that is the basic limitation of an electrical motor uh, as i told you electric motor depend on electromagnetic induction principle given by fleming's rule uh, the uh, magnetic material the permanent magnetic material actually uh, brings that limit now uh, advanced materials uh, have been developed like rare earth samarium cobalt material etc and uh, if uh, tomorrow technology further improves then we can uh, overcome this basic limitation now also we are under the limitation of low torque high speed mechanical output hence uh, from the source side it is low torque high speed but from demanding side it is high torque low speed so definitely Uh, the impedance output impedance output mechanical impedance of the motor is less whereas the mechanical impedance of the load is more you cannot simply connect uh, mismatched impedance devices then the power transfer will be not be correct you might have studied maximum power transfer theorem in electrical classes okay and it says that the power transfer will maximum when the output impedance of the source is equal to input impedance of the load the same thing is applicable for any system not only for electrical it is uh, relevant for mechanical systems as well hence there is a requirement to provide mechanical impedance interface in such situation we have to use gear system between motor output shaft and load input shaft in gear system output power po is equal to gear efficiency into input power and the gear efficiency ideally it is one but because of the friction between the engaged surfaces there will be loss of energy thermal dissipation will be there because of that some of the input power will lost as thermal energy and the remaining only will be available at the output hence the gear efficiency will be always less than 1 but first we analyze the ideal case eta is equal to 1 in such case the input torque given by motor speed multiplied by shaft the motor shaft torque i put tm l here i will explain later earlier i was only discussing about tm tm was a gross torque generated in the motor here tm l means the torque transmitted from motor shaft to the load shaft that is tml this is the uh, torque uh, power input uh, to the gear and power output from the gear is omega l into tl we assume that initially it is equal to 1 amps now desired characteristic gears are low backlash high gear ratio low self inertia good back drivability compact assembly and low internal friction i hope that all of you are uh, familiar with all such terms i need to have to explain all these things because you are already uh, familiar with such terms um, okay now i am explaining how the motor principle uh, how the motor shaft is getting coupled to the load shaft this uh, uh, simple schematic uh, this is a motor shaft this is a load shaft and this represent the uh, bearings Sir, could you go back to the last slide this one yeah uh -huh. 
what is this good bag drivability uh, bag drivability yeah yes sir what is yeah that? yeah uh, it's a very good question bag drivability means i will explain with us next slide say the forward drivability is there reverse drivability is there if the motor is driving the load it is the forward driving that is normally we require you know now suppose we switch off the motor that means ea the armature voltage you make it to zero so there is no driving torque from the motor side now you are driving from the load and if you are able to drive back the motor then assuming that uh, first case you assume that there is no friction in the uh, gear wheels then what will happen uh, the already existing loads are jm bm and uh, here a couple loads are jl and bl only so if you are uh, driving from the load shaft if you are experiencing only this combination jm bm jl bl only that means it is ideally bike drivability but there are some gears this this particular load dynamics is only applicable for forward forward driving when you try to drive it the reverse direction there will be additional losses due to the particular construction of gear mechanism it will not be reversible sometimes or it takes more torque to overcome the internal friction etc in such case you say that it is not ideally back drivable and uh, that bike drivability uh, torque will change uh, uh, depending on the particular case perfectly bike drivable case will be there and yeah, totally uh, impossible cases will be there for example warm gear bike drivable harmonic gears with the large issues are not bike drivable but simple uh, or spur gear bevel gears are bike drivable such uh, you have to classify gears according to the mechanics okay okay we will come back later okay um, this is the um, uh, diagram and here there are two wheels this is the driving wheel this is the driven wheel and i have indicated the teeth this is a simple spur gear mechanism and teeth will be there and the teeth are equally spaced in so that they have to get engaged and it's the number of teeth in m on the motor side shaft is proportional to the radius r up or the uh, circumference of the wheel 2 pi r up similarly the number of teeth on the driven side load side nl will be proportional to rl similarly there are some uh, principle one is here uh, the mechanism is that uh, th through the surface uh, circumference only they are in contact so the action force is equal to reaction force or tml by rm is the action force given by the driving wheel it is equal to tl by rl on the reaction wheel similarly the circumferential velocity uh, of the both the contact points will be equal that is omega m into rm is equal to omega l into r which is tangential velocity similarly the circumferential distance covered by both wheels for a given time will be same that is delta theta m suppose motor rotates by delta theta m and load rotate by delta theta l simultaneously then delta theta m into rm is equal to delta theta l into rl these uh, are the uh, normal passive relationship because of the mechanism now one more thing nm is proportional to rm nl is proportional to rl as i told so hence from equation 3 from this equation 3 you can replace rm by nm that is delta theta m into nm is equal to delta theta l into nl or we can take the gear ratio like this delta theta l by delta theta m is equal to nm by nl and this is also equal to omega l by omega m because of this relationship assuming gear efficiency as 1 the input power is equal to output power that is tml tml is the torque which is transmitted to the load side whereas tm is the total torque generated part of that is consumed within the self load inertia as well as damping and the remaining part is transmitted 
So the transmitted torque, TML into omega, is equal to uh, the torque uh, transmitted to the load side or are available, the power available in the load side, TL into omega, assuming gear ratio or uh, the gear efficiency as one. Well. Hence, we will get a relationship between TML by TL. Such a relation also we will get, and that relation also can be derived from this formula also. Uh, thus, finally, we arrive at these three relationships for the gear transmission. That is, load side velocity is equal to Nm by Nl to omega m. Low, uh, motor side transmitted torque is equal to Nm by Nl into Tl. Similar theta L is equal to Nm by Nl into theta L. Okay. Any doubts on this? Clear. This is your field only. Now, I am augmenting. I am going to augment. Huh? Huh? Ah. Oh, yeah. If the shaft is same, shouldn't TM and TML be same? If the, once again? If the motor shaft is same, then TM and TML should be same, right? TM and TML. No, shaft is same. You see that. See, TM is KT into IA, what I have already derived. This is the generated thing. Okay. Now, when the motor rotates, some part is already used to accelerate internal JM, JM as well as to overcome the bearing friction. And the remaining only will be available for transmission through the gear. So, the here shaft is same only, but TML is always less than TM by the amount used for accelerating the self-load. Okay. Now, uh, the same thing only I explained here. EA and EB, this part already we had derived. JM, BM, all these things, up to this, up to this. Now I am introducing this NM by NL. These are all the new part, new part. So having understood this portion, earlier the entire torque generated, TM was consumed for accelerating the internal load. Now it is not like that. Part of the torque is used to accelerate the load part. So in the initial phase itself, I am subtracting the TML from TM and the remaining portion only is available for accelerating the internal load. Okay. Thus, we, we assume that uh, we have the expression for TML. For time being, assume that it is available. That's why we have subtracted then our task is to find out what is the value of TML. Given theta m, then we are using the previous relation between theta l and theta m. Nm by Nl, you multiply, you'll get theta l. Now, this is the load dynamics. Uh, truly speaking, it's called the inverse dynamics of the load. That is, we are giving theta l and getting TL. Normally, uh, we apply TL and get theta l. That is the forward dynamics. Here we give theta L and get what is the TL required to produce theta L. That's called its inverse dynamics. We are providing, inputting the effect and generating the cost. Then this much of TL is required to generate theta L. Then that TL, you have to multiply by Nm by Nl to get the equivalent TML. Thus we get the expression for TML from theta L and that is subtracted. And, all, and we are adding two sensors here. One is there is a sensor called TACO generator that is mounted on the motor shaft that will provide a voltage proportional to omega. This is a generator sort of thing. This is used for velocity feedback. Then another is a potentiometer having a, is, is a is KPL. Uh, and normally, these potentiometers, rotary potentiometers are connected in the load shaft only because motor will have multiple rotations. Then there will be, uh, again, after 360 degrees, the output will again repeat. But motor sh load shaft will have rotations normally less than 360 degree. Hence, we can use single ton potentiometer connected to the load shaft. Two sensors are also attached. Now, we are going to derive the expression for the transfer function theta L 
divided by Ea. This is the normal block diagram reduction formula. Uh, first, we will uh, split that into two portions. First, we will find only Ta, theta L by Tm. Then this is the only loop there. And this is the forward path, G portion. And this is for H portion. Hence, the transfer function is G by 1 plus GH. So this is the G, Nm by Nl into 1 by Jm square plus Bm. This is the G portion. So what are the outputs from KTG and KPF? Voltage is only, that's why I integrated voltage. These are all sensors. Output will be in volt. Okay. The input is shaft velocity, radian per second. Output is in volt. KPL, the input is shaft deflection. Output is in volt. All sensors uh, in our case gives voltage as the output. Okay. Now, uh, this is the forward path. G divided by 1 plus G into H. What is the H portion? H is the Nm by Nl into JLS square plus uh, BLS plus K. On solving, you will get this expression and that is called G1S. I am represented by G1S. You see this structure of this. This is uh, purely mechanical. There is no motor part coming. It's only the coupling of gear between motor dynamics and load dynamics. And that's why we are, uh, the input itself is the motor torque direct. So the motor electromagnetic part is prior to this. So it's purely mechanical. Earlier, uh, uh, if you are, you are considering only purely mechanical load, it is one by JLS square plus BLS plus scale. And purely uh, motor load, it is one by JMS square plus BMS. Now, when we couple both them together, you will get a new expression. Theta L by TM is equal to NM by NL into this expression. Here, the first term contains JM plus NM by NL square into JL. That is gear ratio square multiplied by JL. This is called the, this portion is called the reflected load impedance. This is a reflected load inertia to the motor shaft. Similarly, this is the reflected load damping to the motor shaft. This is the reflected stiffness of the load to the motor shaft. Thus, the reflection process will multiply uh, the parameter, impedance parameter by the square of gear ratio. Uh, and normally, for a, uh, as I told you, uh, the motor is output is uh, low impedance and the actual load is high impedance. So Nm will be normally smaller than Nl. So Nm by Nl, for example, this ratio if it is 100, sorry, uh, 1 by 100, 1 by 100, then the square will be 1 by 10,000. That is the output, the load inertia will be divided by 10,000 while it is getting reflected to motor side. Load damping will be divided by 10,000 while it's reflected to motor side like that. This is how the reflected impedance of the load side is drastically reduced if you are using a high gear ratio against. Any doubts? Hello. Yeah. Sir, here for load dynamics, we have used a second order system. Okay. Can there be some higher order system? Okay. See, load, uh, here we are using a single lumped uh, parameter in the first case. Simple mass spring damper load only. Now we are using. If you are using coupled mass spring damper, multiple things, then there is the called uh, flexible structure. Definitely you can use no problem. Now we are starting control system with as simple as possible, then we will make it more and more complex. Okay. Yeah. Ah, now I am going to derive the total expression. Uh, earlier, uh, say we have derived the G1. This is G1. G1 is relating only theta L and Tm. Theta L and Tm. And there is a need to find out theta L by Ea, total T. That's what I am doing this. Uh, KT by R into G1, I will get theta L. That theta L multiplied by NL by NM is theta M. 
and the feedback path KB was connected to motor side only. That is why from the load side, we had to multiply it by NL by NM to get the motor side theta M. Multiplied by S will give the angular velocity. It's a differentiating operator. And finally, uh, this is a simplified diagram of this diagram, the previous one. And we can now work it out and solve, reduce it to get kt by r into j equivalent s square plus b equivalent s plus k equivalent, where j equivalent is jm plus n m by nl square jl, as I told you. b equivalent is, now b equivalent only has an additional term. Earlier, we have only mechanical passive thing had only BM and NM by NL square into uh, BL. Now, KT, KB by the internal damping to the electromagnetic induction also got added while we considered this vacuum of path. K equal this. And uh, earlier, uh, uh, we have NM by NL, now it is KT by RA only the motor forward path only since we are taking only theta m here thus um, you know, we have derived the transfer function of the motor coupled with load dynamics and the transfer function is also expressed between motor shaft deflection and armature voltage okay now the next thing is we have to design controller Whatever we derived so far, I am uh, the KT by R into 1 by J equivalent to S plus B equivalent and the S yes I have taken outside. This much, this is what we have derived so far. It's called the plan dynamics. The time is the output. And only the assumption now I made is I removed the, the stiffness part, load stiffness part, K equivalent part, uh, to make it as a standard uh, normalized uh, second order dynamics. Otherwise, there is no problem for this. Now, the, there are two more elements I added. One is the sensor generator as well as the uh, sensor scale factor, potentiometer scale factor. Other is two controller gains. So far, we have been directly giving input at the armature, EA. Now, EA is going to be derived through the closed loop action. That is the difference. Earlier, so far, we have considered only open loop dynamics of the actuation system. This is the open loop dynamics of the actuation system. Now, we are closing the loop by feeding back the sensor taco generator output as well as the rotary potentiometer output. And the closing of the loop is done through a particular controller structure. This structure is called proportional plus rate feedback control, P plus RI designated. In some literature, it is also called PD control, proportional plus derivative control. But the problem is uh, derivative control part you can give either in the forward path or reverse path. That's why I have specifically mentioned as rate feedback path. Yeah derivative separately we will consider otherwise but you should not get confused in some literature this is also called PD because YD we are uh, uh, feeding back the derivative of the motor output. Omega M is the derivative of theta M that we sense through taco generator so this is also in a way derivative feedback it is coming in the feedback path not in the forward path this can be now one more thing this uh, normally, uh, when we give the command, command will be always in electrical voltage. And the feedback signals also will be electrical. So, truly speaking, this is the actual physical interconnection diagram, both with respect to electrical aspect as well as with respect to mechanical. Outputs are physical output, theta m and omega m, whereas input is electrical, in volt. Feedback signals are also in volt here. VF is not seen properly here. VF is the feedback voltage that is also in volt. And uh, taco generator output is also in volt. So K1 and K2, these gains can be implemented as normal amplifier, proportional amplifier circuits. 
through linear integrated circuits in electronics using operation amplifiers and all. And this K1 is the forward path gain, uh, or you can say that the position path gain, and K2 is the right path gain. And finally, uh, one more simplification. This KP I had taken to the forward path. How? Here one problem is not in a unity feedback form structure because the feedback path you are having a KP. I want to make it as a unity feedback form. How it can be done is instead of VC, I give theta C. Theta C is the equivalent mechanical deflection command. How it is obtained? Through the same scale factor. Because uh, mechanical deflection and feedback voltage are related through sensor scale factor KP. I use the same scale factor to define an equivalent mechanical command. That is VC by KP. If I theta C as the mechanical command in radian, that is given here. So if I simply replace VC, I will get theta C into KP in the forward path. So here theta C into KP will come, here theta M into KP, here there is a KP, here there is a KP. Both the KPs I am taking to the forward path, that is why the KP comes here. The advantage is here it is unity feedback. The command is in mechanical radian, output is also in mechanical physical radians, and it uh, satisfies the normal standard structure and here the other things k1 is here k2 is here ktg is here and the kt ra by kt by ra i replaced by capital k and j equivalent s plus b equivalent j equal is replaced by j b equivalent by b there is same thing only to reduce the complexity of the notation uh, finally uh, i will get uh, this transfer function as K by JS plus B plus K, K2, KTG. You can see that the rate feedback adds to the available damping B because there is no S term here, no? It is adding with B, K, K2, KTG. If K2 is equal to zero, the rate feedback gain is equal to zero, no extra damping is added. But if you want to add more damping, you can give positive value for K2, at the same time, if you remove the damping, available B, then you put negative value for K2. So the total damping can be made less. So this is the inner loop. And after that, theta M by theta C, I close the outer loop. Finally, these are all simple steps you can work out. Finally, you will get the transfer function theta M by theta C in this form. You see, here it is S square plus sum into S multiplied by a constant here. And the same constant is coming in the numerator. So it is equivalent to this structure, omega square by S square plus two theta omega S plus omega square, where omega and represent the natural frequency, undamped natural frequency of the system. And theta is a damping factor normally the control system specifications are given in terms of uh, natural frequency and damping factor. So for a given omega and theta, you can find or derive K1 and K2 because the, this, if you equate these two things, omega n square is equal to the numerator and two theta omega n is equal to B plus K, K2, KTG by J. You have two equations and two unknowns. You can uniquely solve them out to get the expression for K2 and KTG that you are doing in the afternoon. Okay, the class time is over. Uh, so you can meet Mr. Abhilash in the afternoon and get the remaining portions, okay? All right. So, hey. सर ले जो ही कट गया तेरा ऐसे बोलो यार अपलोड करो यार क्या चीज़ वीडियो अरे वो होस्ट ने अपलोड करी थी वो मतलब करेंगे
नहीं नहीं ये क्लास वाली लैब वाली अपलोड करी थी ना अभिलाष सर ने नहीं वो लैब वाली की बात कर रहा हूं मैंने सेम सर से पूछा था तो उन्होंने बोला था कि होस्ट ने अपलोड करी थी तो दिनेश सर चेक करके बताएंगे ठीक है ये वाली तो सर ने भी अपलोड करी ना वैसे मैं अपना प्लेटफॉर्म सर अरे दो लोग रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं सर लोग तो अपने रिकॉर्डिंग बंद करें अभी पहले अपनी आवाज भी जा रही है खाली है